Wednesday, Tuesday, the 17th of November. Welcome, my panelists, Ali Kansachu, the CEO at Rich Frontiers Management in Nairobi. Oriolu Ade today is uh, the head of macroeconomic strategy at uh, Greenwich Merchant Bank. And of course, uh, Onyeka uh, Ijoma is the head of uh, industrial goods analysis at Bativa Capital Management. We thank you all, our analysts and panelists, every day making it here on the program. We're very grateful for your presence. So we're getting to Monday started after a very roaring past week for the Nigerian burst. The market softened just about three quarter uh, of a percent. But when we uh, unpack the numbers, we find that investors profit taking, but there's still some measure of bargain hunting. If we look at the total transaction uh, yesterday, a little over 10,000. The Ivorian market, the Egyptian market, the Kenyan market, and the South African market all upstaged the Nigerian stock market. In East Africa, yes, that's where we're scratching after some big stories around why the Nairobi business venture remains suspended by the Nairobi Stock Exchange. I guess this business is in the shoemaking, uh, retailing, and all of that. The authority says they remain suspended uh, until later, um, another week or two. Uganda ride hailing service, Safe Border, says they're exiting Kenya. State Bank of Mauritius is closing five branches in Kenya by December, I guess, in Nairobi and in Mombasa. Uh, these are not looking very great stories to me, but I'm encouraged by the UNECA, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, hosting an East Africa, all sovereigns there, post-pandemic road to social and economic recovery later uh, 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 in the month. I'm encouraged by this particular post-pandemic rule for a regional conference by everyone. I love the cooperation and that regional uh, cooperation in East Africa. But again, Ali, uh, coming quickly here, what's biting uh, State Bank of Mauritius and, and, and Safe Border exiting Kenya operations? So State Bank of Mauritius, of course, uh, entered the market through the acquisition of a tier three bank, Fidelity Bank, um, and I think uh, essentially they're right sizing uh, the business. You know, in this post pandemic world, uh, uh, you know, so much business has gone digital. Um, most banks in Kenya have too much headcount in their branches. So I think State Bank of Mauritius is it's, it's just rationalizing some of the branch network that they acquired. Um, and therefore, I don't see it in the context of uh, a vote uh, for or against Kenya. It's more business rationalization and the post-COVID economy. Um, with respect to uh, uh, the story about the Uganda Ride Hailing Service safe border exiting Kenya, you will recall a couple of weeks ago, the president made a big pitch with the Boda Boda operators. He's trying to to bring them into the tax net uh, via giving them an app um, and, uh, and basically cited that it was practically uh, a multi-billion dollar annual business. Um, and, uh, and therefore, I think Safe Boda just probably going back to their home market uh, where there's an enormous opportunity as well, I'm sure. Um, UNACA hosting an East African community post-pandemic road to social and economic recovery. Um, you know, this is important. As we've discussed severally, Africa has been hit harder by the economic emergency so far rather than the medical emergency. And um, our economies have been under tremendous pressure. UNACA has shown a lot of leadership this year in terms of putting Africa's voice at the top table. And I think this is another example of them um, uh, seeking coordination amongst the East African community. The, the, the worry is, uh, let me tell you, is that the pandemic uh, about which we were patting ourselves on the back um, and saying, you know, how heroic Africa's response was. My concern is it's just a slow burning fuse. And in fact, we have not seen the peak of the medical emergency. In Kenya, our numbers are now test positivity rate nudging 20%. South Africa, I saw a recent report where excess deaths were 66,000. 
and the University of Wittesrand is saying all of these are COVID-related deaths. And if I look across uh, uh, the continent, um, I'm becoming increasingly worried. I saw that Africa CDC similarly were alerting everybody yesterday. So, so you know, I think we've got to keep an eye on that. Uh, we certainly have not dodged that bullet, in my view. Kenya shilling at a record low, traded above 110 this morning, according to Bloomberg. A bit of a concern here. Um, uh, uh, the shilling has been historically one of the most stable currencies on the continent. Um, and it's worrying given that our remittances year on year are up 7.3%. Um, and the oil price is so soft um, uh, uh, that nevertheless the currency remains quite weak. And I think it's going to take another bit of support by the IMF to put some spine into the shilling. And if I can just finish off with those two stories, CMA granting a REIT manager license to Acorn Investment Management. Acorn, I think, is a Helios uh, uh, um, offshoot and uh, focus has been on student housing, which is a very exciting opportunity. Um, and they seriously have a strong balance sheet, unlike some of the other uh, real estate plays we've had at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Nairobi Business Ventures, um, the last report I saw was a Dubai-based entity was seeking to reverse into this as a way of taking the listing. Um, uh, if business ventures has been, I'm afraid, in the doldrums uh, for quite a while. The balance sheet is shot to bits, and I think somebody was looking at injecting themselves into that opportunity. Mm. Okay, quite a whole lot of uh, uh, smooth and rough patch across the region, as it were, as you find in other regions on the continent. But again, the one is from the Africa CDC is very, very uh, 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 important. Everyone should take that very seriously. The, the, the chart, the graph is not, is not looking friendly at all. When I look it up this morning, early today, uh, the, the numbers are climbing. But again, it looks like it's been overshadowed by the fact that we're a very huge population, about a billion also on the continent so it looks like these few thousands are just uh, uh 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 just below the radar but again if it booms then everyone is going to get uh seriously injured if if, if it's a tick tock so we need to take very uh, uh important and, and i'm very happy that at least president ramaphosa president kenyatta has taken state of the nation address specifically to address this second wave uh, and i think we we need to see a bit more of this in other uh, sovereign uh, countries as well. Let's touch on West African and the Nigerian market. BOC Gases has been doing business in Nigeria for at least about, a, uh, uh, about a, between three to four decades now. They are planning uh, the, 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 majority, the, the majority shareholder in the UK is planning to sell 60% of his stake to TY Holdings Limited. Uh, it's called the Share Purchase Agreement. Uh, that's for as far as industrial business is concerned. I'm sure uh, 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 Ijeoma has an eye on that. The Nigerian government is planning to sell Abuja Stadium, the TBS, the Redu Power Plants, and a few others, including water basin uh, projects in 2021. It looks the government's back is against the wall, as it were, technically speaking, in terms of fund. Uh, Agri Development Bank of Ghana is setting loan portfolio at 50%. Benin Republic is doing its first listing of uh, eight-year bonds, 6.50% on the paper. That will be later in November. Of course, that will be on the regional exchange in, in Ivory Coast, the BRVM. Let me touch on very quickly with uh, Aurelua, very quickly. Uh, what are the macroeconomic underpinnings that you're looking at when government now seems to be, wants to move very fast and furious in 2021? The initial plan was that these asset sales will happen in 2020. When we're coming through from 2019, it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. Now, government says it looks like it's going to happen next year. Yes, um, and just like you mentioned, I mean, we're expecting to see some of these assets still happen in 2020, where, you know, COVID 19 came and did change a lot of stances, did disrupt a lot of things, and this also exposed a lot of vulnerabilities in the Nigerian economy. So, so far to say, um, I mean, if you're looking at the 2020 implementation budget for um, the second quarter and the first quarter, we'd see that, you know, domestic recovery so in itself hasn't even yielded anything um, for this past quarter. Third quarter is still not yet out, but I mean, we're not expecting anything significant. 
um, from that end. So it's just clear that you know we have these ideal physical assets, and you know they are just there, and they are not really yielding anything for the Nigerian economy. So um, they are being depreciated every now and then because they are just being left idle. Um, nothing is really happening there. So definitely, you know, a clear plan, a clear strategy needs to be implemented into you know um, asset selling. You know, in the Nigerian economy, I mean, I think we should begin to look at you know more privatization policies, you know, bringing you know, more private investors on board um, into uh, um, you know um, these um, some of these um, assets, some of these uh, economic uh, strategies, from especially now from 2020 to 2022, because we believe this is very trivial in the Nigerian economy. I mean, it's looking to, um, I mean, this I think these two years, um, it's it's going to say so much about the economy, so much about um, um, how they're going to sustain themselves, how they're going to you know, improve um, the living conditions of a lot of Nigerian people. Um, if you look at the fact that, you know, um, the debt capital in itself is also estimated at about 300 to 900 billion um, dollars. So um, there's still so much to be harnessed in the Nigerian economy, and it's so clear that, you know, this is not still being done. I mean, I think we could also look at the fact that, you know, there could be securitization of some of these assets. Some of these operating assets can be securitized. And, you know, um, I, I think we still have that level of liquidity to take up, you know, some of these um, um, financial assets. We're seeing what is currently happening in the uh, bonds market and the fixed income space. And, you know, the move from, you know, fixed income investors into the equity markets because you know there's this lack of supply um i think you know securitization could be one way the government could also look at you know raising funds you know creating liquidity in the nigerian economy because it's clear that that is essentially what we need um, in the nigerian economy you know especially to sustain the budget you know budget deficit for 2021 is looking at about 5.2 trillion which is quite high you know almost the highest we've seen so far so yes we still need to look at so 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 much of this policy regime is too significant freeing up resources for the Nigerian economy. Hmm. We need to look at how to free up resources uh, to boost the economy. Onyeka, look at the BOC gases story. This is your industrial goods space. Yes. Um, so, I mean, we've, we've had this, um, we've, we've had this, um, you know, story sort of been like building up over a couple of years now. Um, you know, the Ninja Group um, has been uh, um, you know, has been looking to um, offload the BOC gases, um, the Nigerian um, unit of the BOC gases um, for a while now. And the same T um, TY holds is basically take up, you know, basically take up this, um, you know, take up the, the, the opportunity. And I think it will be a good one for TY Holdings. Uh, when I look at the, you know, top line growth, um, it's, been, it's been very positive, you know, over the past couple of years. Uh, when I look at, you know, gross profits, they, they seem to be, they seem to be decently profitable. I know that in 2019, they had a slight drop in their, in their habits, but that was only due to um, a surge in their, you know, operating expenses. Outside of that, the, the company seems to be doing pretty well. Um, when we look at, because the company deals in manufacturing gases, in industrial gases um, largely, when we look at the industrial space um, in terms of you know my, the expectations around manufacturing activity um, for 2021, we expect you know an improvement from the from 2020 uh, from the 2020 levels, and we expect that to continue to improve. The AFCFT. Um, even though the jury is still out on, you know, Nigeria's, um, the way Nigeria is expected to engage with the AFCFTA, um, the base expectation is that we should see some improvement in manufacturing activity as, you know, some, um, some domestic manufacturers you know, will look to take advantage of that to push some of their products across, you know, across um, borders. And so this, um, you know, should be positive for, um, for firms like BOC Gases and investing like uh, assured investments in, in, in TY Holdings uh, in case. Okay, Th thank you so much for giving us more insight into that particular transaction, which was called the Share Purchase Agreement, how this will improve uh, BOC Gases as a listed company on the exchange uh, involved in industrial gases. Again, 
gas is becoming a very big discussion within the Nigeria's industrial space. Look at the Southern African market, and I've been looking at the Twitter line of the AFDB over the last few days. The conversation had been around industrial manufacturing, industrial manufacturing for Africa, one of the high fives of the, of the AFDB, but I don't know how we can make this uh, possible. Uh, Zimwembe Zimbabwe is looking at a five-year economic plan to deliver expansion of more than 5%. Zambia is, uh, says is looking to complete talks to sell Glencore's uh, uh, stake in a month. Glencore has said, you can take it. That was just about, uh, about two, three months ago. And says, look, we're, we're not here to, 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 to wrangle with the government. Uh, you can have it all if you want it. So this looks like the government is looking forward to take those uh, shares up uh, that uh, previously belonged to uh, uh, Glencore. ShopRite. Group sales, 3.3% year-on-year, minus liquor sales in South Africa, which was hit by the hard lockdown and the ban of alcohol uh, sale. Uh, Ali, the, the, um, let's look at ShopRite to start with uh, in terms of the earnings. So the ShopRite group sales up 3.3% when you uh, strip out uh, liquor. I think that's not bad in the circumstances, but bear in mind that... Uh, Supermarkets on balance have been doing well globally, um, when, you know, because people need to eat, of course. And uh, so I think, you know, that performance is, isn't bad. I expect the consumer in South Africa downsized um, uh, and uh, basket sizes were reduced. But nevertheless, I thought that was a reasonable performance. Vodacom increasing its interim dividend by 9.2%. That's a chunky increase uh, for, for the dividend. And I, I think it speaks to two things. One was obviously um, they spoke of uh, more data usage and more usage across their networks. And also bear, bear in mind, they now have the stake in Safaricom here in Kenya. And uh, Kenya was also robust uh, in that reporting period um, all things considered. Uh, Zimbabwe five-year economic plan, I've noticed uh, the president's become very, very bullish of late um, about uh, the Zimbabwean economic recovery. Um, I think, look, you know, they've been under sanctions for so long um, uh, that it is possible for them to bounce, but ultimately they've got to find some kind of way of reconciling with the international community to really unlock the potential that is still in that country, as we all know. Zambia, as you know, defaulted on the euro bond. Um, I saw uh, the Chinese bank has allowed them uh, an interest moratorium. Um, uh, there were some very choice words that the finance minister spoke. He said, you know, I'm drowning in a river and the IMF is standing on the side and saying, you know, once you come out, yes, we'll consider helping you. But he said, how can I get out when I'm drowning? Um, he was quite a, quite some witty comments, but I think the issue for Zambia is it's all very well taking away Glencore State, like they did with the Indian entrepreneur. I can't remember his name, hmm. but the problem is uh, who's going to come and buy it right now in such an environment, right, where the perceived political risk is sky high. Maybe they've got some kind of swap they can do with the Chinese in order to reduce the debt with them. But uh, we'll need more um, evidence before we can really discuss what the Zambian government strategy might be behind this. Copper prices, of course, are doing quite well. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think most likely the Chinese will step into those mines by, owned by Glencore. Most likely the Chinese will be the easiest to do the, any deal with right now. They got the pockets of money and they're willing to go anywhere uh, the money flows. So. Uh, dealing with the Europe, the Australian, whatever, was going to be a bit very difficult looking at the G20 and other unresolved issues with the, at the Euro bond market, as you rightly put it. So most likely, uh, before they try to force the hand, the soccer try to force the hands of Glencore, I'm sure they have an eye on a particular bidder or who they're going to sell it to, maybe take some cash up front, whatever that goes, and, and move on with uh, those Glencore uh, copper assets in, in the country. Uh, the AFDB is talking about industrial manufacturing, and I'm just going to ask uh, Onyeka and Orelua for a minute each about this industrial whole uh, industrial manufacturing uh, rhetoric. How do we get it up and running? I know we have the usual problem of electricity and what have you, 
But then, how can we get something done, squeeze water out of stone, as it were, within the Nigerian space? Aurelua, let, let me start with you. Um, yes, um, yes, I can earlier mention, I mean, we have a lot of structural um, issues in the Nigerian economy. Um, it's so clear that, you know, we first need to address some of these issues in order to, you know, upskill industrial production in the Nigerian economy. Um, it can be done. It's not like it can't be done. Um, I mean, I think, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of these factors still um, you know, travels around the fact that, you know, some of these, um, uh, there's this lack of transparency in the Nigerian economy. I know some of these fundings that have been, you know, introduced into, you know, all those sub-segments are not being utilized by these, um, by these agencies. They are not being, um, um, there's lack of accountability. But um, I think what we're currently seeing is that, you know, there, there's still there's still some sort of change, like, you know, for example, what, what we saw for um, um, the, the refineries and the fact that, you know, they started, um, you know, trying to improve transparency in their own books, you know, we're able to see, you know, clearly, you know, what these assets were be, be, be able, what the, the assets were able to do um, in 2020, 2019, especially, and, you know, we're going to be expecting to see for the 2020 books, too. you know, so, so we expect that, you know, some of all these things could trickle down some of the improvements in um, accountability and transparency, and um, it will trickle down into, you know, industrial production and, um, at large, um, the Nigerian economy is is one that you know a lot of potential still needs to be harnessed from the economy. But you know, when we have these kind of factors, you can't really move. So there's there's so much you can do as a government. There's so much you can do um, as you know a private investor or or uh, an FDI trying to bring in your inflows into the economy. So you know, some of these things needs to be addressed. The the economy still needs to be, become more enabling for all of these funds for all of these inflows to come into the economy. So when we begin to see some of all these things targeted at all of those things, I think we can then begin to see improvements in industrial production and industrial output at large. Okay, let me ask you, thank you so much, Oriolua. Ejoma, what's your thought on this? I definitely think Oriolua uh, hits the nail on the head. Um, it's, it's all about driving infrastructure um, improvements and creating an enabling environment for companies to thrive. Um, we see that, you know, we, we, we've we seen some improvements in agriculture outputs um, since the um, closure of, um, since the closure of the land borders as, you know, um, you know, local producers have been, you know, um, have, have stepped in to sort of fill the gap, um, albeit not sufficiently enough to, to temper inflation. However, you know, we still see that, um, we, we still expect that by the time the borders are going to be, are, are going to reopen, um, the local manufacturers are still going to be way out of their depth because in terms of competitiveness, they're still, you know, way behind. And oh, um, a, a lot of it, you know, stems from infrastructural challenges, whether it's um, storage infrastructure, whether it's transport infrastructure, whether it's um, power, like energy infrastructure, we still we still way behind and so if but unless you know we create that environment for them to be um, competitive i don't see how you know that's going to happen so it's about working with the governments um to provide you know financing for the, the right kind of infrastructure and also working with the lawmakers to provide the right kind of policies to support um the, the sectors Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Onyeka Ijoma. Let's uh, let's touch on North Africa very quickly uh, and and get a sense of what some of the corporate uh, uh, news are in the, in our box this morning. When you uh, consider that Libya is now doing about 1.2 million barrels per day, but it looks like all the parties, all the factions, have agreed the need to move forward. Albeit, if they don't, it's going to be mutually assured destruction. Afrex in bank nine months numbers looks very big. Total asset up 34% at the doorstep of 20 billion US dollars, lending fast and furious under the COVID 19 pandemic period. Egypt's cotton and textile raising revenue to about 4.5 billion Egyptian shillings for the year 2020 2021 period. Delta insurers net profit up nearly 36% year on year, 
in the first quarter. And uh, else, what the electorate uh, is looking at is uh, signing $90 million new deal for Infotech system and all of that. Ali, give us your final word on this. Afrexit Bank numbers, you want to touch on that quickly? Yes, so um, obviously, as, like you said, they've really uh, uh, stepped up to the plate, plus 34% uh, increase in uh, total assets, sums it up. And, uh, you know, the chairman has been uh, very aggressive uh, this year in terms of uh, uh, making their presence felt. Um, net income, $217 million. Uh, so I thought it very respectable numbers coming out of that. Um, of course, they're now based out of Cairo, um, but uh, I think they've made a significant impact uh, and impression in uh, 2020. Um, uh, obviously, they also have a very big portfolio in Zimbabwe, about which things are a little bit opaque. I'd like some more clarity on that at some point, but overall, you can't argue with those numbers. Um, and then uh, just to uh, go back to your Libya story you were talking about, that's ramped up very, very quickly. And I saw that OPEC are now talking about freezing any production increase um, for another six months. So I think that is in recognition of this big spike up um, in production in Libya. Um, of course, there's been a lot of optimism in the oil markets coming out of the vaccine. A story thinking, you know, we'll all get vaccine and fly around the world again. I'm not so convinced it's going to happen so quickly. I think some of this, these announcements are playing to the stock market more. Um, but for now, uh, you know, we, let's ride that wave. If I was sitting in uh, some of the shoes of the oil producers, I'd be looking to hedge some of my production um, a little bit higher up. I, I agree uh, with the vaccine talk, not available publicly until the best until middle of next year before everyone will get it and be sure that it really works perfectly at least at some point and get everyone back on board we're looking at technically another one year ahead of us so uh all things considered let's leave it there for today thank you so much everyone thank you alec and for wrapping the show thank from you. rich frontiers management thank you so much today thank you very much we appreciate your time from greenwich merchant bank and of course, Ijoma from Vetiva Capital Management. Thank you all and have a great Tuesday. See you again next time. Bye for now.